time I come back to the States, there's always a few things that I end up bringing back with me. There's a couple of gimmies right off the bat. Like, of course, mac and cheese. Now, in Germany, you can just get Käsespätzle, and that's in many ways better. But mac and cheese still has a solid place in my heart. The ridiculously chemical-laden stuff that you can get at the store. I remember on camping trips as a kid, we used to make this stuff uh, in a stove in the back of the car, and I have uh, many fond memories. So it always activates that, you know, the nostalgia, the member berries. Anyway, continuing on in the food vein, salsa. I actually don't really like any of the salsa in Germany, mostly because they have a lot of sugar. And that's a little counterintuitive because the salsas here don't have a lot of sugar. In fact, this has no added sugar. It's just tomato, peppers, onions, garlic, and some vinegar. Very good stuff. Continuing in the spicy category, we have chipotle gourmets. This is basically mayo with some spicy chipotle peppers. And uh, it's very hot, very spicy, and very delicious on sandwiches. Two more things in the food category. I swear it's not all food. Uh, banana peppers. I have never actually seen banana peppers anywhere in Europe, in Germany or in Italy, when I was living down there. And they are delicious. And what's funny is this is a Italian brand, well, Italian-American brand and they're awesome. Again, there's no sugar added. This is just peppers, water, and uh, vinegar. A little bit of salt. Delicious on sandwiches. One more thing in the food category. The classic Cheez-It. Now, Cheez-Its, uh, again, a big part of my childhood. I remember having these. My grandma put these out around four o'clock and served them with some ginger ale. And uh, yeah, I have many fond memories of Cheez-Its. To be honest, they're not quite as good now as I remember them being, but uh, yeah, it's a little uh, little slice of home I can bring back with me. Another thing that I love about the U.S. is we can get our vitamins in gummy form. I mean, gummy form vitamins, probably the most brilliant invention, possibly of the last century. Um, yeah, taking vitamin D, especially in the winter, always good for you, but sometimes you forget. But with a gummy, I'm never going to forget to eat a gummy. And finally, I have something non-food related. Pain medication! Uh, you know, sometimes I'll get headaches, not very often, but when I do, man, they just, they put me on my butt and there's not a lot I can do about it. So, uh, to stay productive, I'll, I'll just take a, uh, a leave or something similar like that. Here you can get them everywhere, gas stations, Target, Walmart, grocery stores, and of course, pharmacies. Yeah, I think that's it. It's not just artificial foods and painkillers that you can get in the U.S. There's some things you just have to be here to experience. First, we have the All-American Diner. You can tell it's a diner because it says cafe. The reason I love... Wait. Back that up. Hmm. Now, where have I seen that before? Diners are great because they've got high top bar seating, unlimited refills in the coffee, and at least two kinds of hot sauce. Because it's a diner, you can order breakfast anytime and overhear the locals chatting about the weather, or why their annoying neighbor Steve only cuts his grass once a month. Luckily, because this is America, diners are not the only place you can fill up on eggs and cheese. One of the things I love every time coming back here is getting a quality breakfast sandwich. Something you can't really find everywhere, and definitely something I appreciate about the U.S. Yep. Thank you very much. All right, so let me walk you through what's in here. We got peppers, onions, hash brown, which is key, cheese, eggs, hot sauce, on a seated roll. Give it a second shot. Mm. 
Another thing I love that we have here in uh, upstate New York are the environmental education centers. I'm not sure how common this is in other parts of the country, but it's a little different. It's not exactly a park. It's not exactly a nature preserve, but it's somewhere like in between. You know, it's open to the public and uh, a lot of them, like this place has an interpretive center. So you can kind of learn about nature, learn about the species here and just learn about your natural environment. The nice thing is, in addition to the interpretive center, there's obviously a lot of trails you can explore here. Again, it's not exactly a nature preserve. What this allows for is, uh, you know, envi some environmental education of the youth, which is super important. So they care about their environment and they care to preserve it when they grow older. I know that was the case with me. I was lucky enough my parents took me here and other places out in nature. And although at the time I just wanted to stay inside and play Nintendo or uh, play with my Legos, but now I feel very fortunate that, you know, it all started very young, which is why things like this are very important. Wow, this trail's changed. So this is the, this is the beaver tree trail. And uh, I'll give you one guess as to why. In the spring and summer, there's always a lot of people out here hiking. Whew. All right, let's go uh, warm up and let's go to our next spot. So in America, we don't have a whole lot of third places other than work and home. I mean, we used to have church, but not as bad anymore. But Better than church, we have microbreweries. Now, this is very different concept here. It's still fairly new. It's not a restaurant. It's not a bar. Yeah. It's a place you can come to, gather with your friends, and just enjoy Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And uh, oh, really? no. yeah, have fun. They usually have games here. Uh, the place that we were at last night, we had a shuffleboard game. Yes. Tons yeah, of fun. Yeah. Not very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, or sometimes they'll have video games or darts, something like that. And, you know, it's pretty relaxed. And this place in particular, it, it's kind of like uh, some of these self-service beer gardens where you can bring your own food. Um, obviously, you buy your drinks here, but you can, you know, bring your own food and just hang out here for hours. It's a lot of fun. Oh, forgot to mention, another cool thing you can get at breweries, lights. Let me show you. That was good. And free water. Given the um, interesting history that we have here in the States with Prohibition, it's not hard to see why microbreweries are so popular today. I highly recommend checking out a microbrewery. They're a lot of fun to hang out in and not a bad way to meet people. But I think that's going to do it for the video today. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. <laughs>